Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at Oxygen's advanced query feature. The advanced query feature is basically an interface for WordPress's WP underscore query. So to start this video, we're gonna go over to Bill Erickson's website, which is billerickson.net, and he has this super fantastic list of all the query arguments that WP underscore query accepts. So those are the things that we allow you to use. I'm gonna keep this up as reference, but if you're new to WP Query or Oxygen's advanced query feature, I really encourage you to check this out and take a look through all of the options so that you can better understand what they do and how to use them. Now let's jump over here. I've got a page in Oxygen. I've already set up an easy posts element and I'm returning some custom posts. These are a post with a type of property and they have a few custom fields too to give us some things to work with. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna switch from custom query to advanced and I want to edit the query instead of using a preset because we're gonna build the query from the ground up. Now, when you click add query parameter, you get this first box here. And if you click the drop down, you see all of the WP query arguments that are listed over on Bill Erickson's website. We can query posts by categories, comment count, date and time, meta values, which is super helpful, whether it has a password by the title, there are tons of query options here, but they are searchable. So for instance, if we want to list only a post of a certain type, we can use the post underscore type argument. Let's go ahead and drop that in and we'll add a value. And we're gonna say the post type is property. This will ensure that only posts of the property post type are returned. But we can do this with the other query options in Oxygen, so this isn't really that interesting. What we wanna get into is something a little more advanced. You can do things like taxonomy queries, author queries for author archives, but today what I wanna jump into is doing a meta query. So let's do a meta underscore query, which is gonna allow us to query posts based on their meta field values which is super useful if you use advanced custom fields. So let's drop in a meta query and add a value. We're gonna choose array. If we're looking for multiple meta fields, we do need this relation property as well to tell us whether we're looking for multiple keys on an and or an or basis. But for this, we're only gonna query one field. So let's do array, and then we're gonna need four values. Let's take a look at the dropdown. We have compare key type and value. If we're jumping into this with no understanding of WP Query, what we can do is we can jump over here to Bill Erickson's website and we can control F and search for meta underscore query. And let's look for the appropriate reference here. So meta underscore query, it's an array, it accepts relation and then an array which contains key, value, type and compare, the same exact properties that we have in our advanced query interface. Let's look at what key is. Key is the custom fields key. So if we know we're wanting to query by a custom field that's named price, for instance, we could choose key in the value type price. Now it's looking for posts with a type of property that have a price custom field. Let's jump over here and look at the compare option, what does that do? If we look at compare, it gives us an operator. We can use equal to, not equal to, greater than, greater than, or equal to, all of the normal operators, plus some pretty cool ones that are really handy for string comparisons, like like, or not like, or in. These can be really, really handy if you're wanting to do kind of a fuzzier match and you don't want to have to have an exact match when dealing with strings. But in this case, we're dealing with a number. And let's say we wanna only show properties with a price that's lower than some value. So we're gonna put compare and we're gonna put the less than symbol. Now the next one is going to be type. This is pretty important to make sure that our query works properly. Let's look over here at type. This says it's the custom field type. Possible values are numeric, binary, care, date, date time, decimal, signed time, and unsigned. Since we're working with a number, we wanna make sure we pass the type of numeric to our query. So let's set this to numeric. That'll make sure that our comparisons work as expected since we're comparing numbers to numbers. 
Now, the value that we want to compare. If we go over here, it explains that the value is the custom field value. So this is basically the number we want to compare to. So let's click add value. And we're looking for the price key. And we want to find posts where the price value is less than this value. So for instance, if we want it to be less than, say, $60,000, this should return only posts with a price key less than $60,000. So let's go ahead and apply the query parameter there. And you can see now all our properties are in the $50,000 range. If we go in and adjust that to something like greater than 60,000 and apply the query parameter, you'll see now everything's above $60,000. But we also have the square footage here. So what if we want only properties below, say, $70,000 with more than 5,000 square feet? Well, we can do that. We can go in here and we need to adjust our compare. Say we want it less than $70,000. So we're going to adjust that to a less than symbol and go down here and change our value to 70,000. And then on this parameter, we're going to add a new option, which is the relation. And we want to pass in and. So it needs to meet both of these requirements for it to be returned in our query. So let's add another value. And now we're gonna do another array. And now that this is familiar, we can just drop in these items pretty quickly here. So we know we wanna query the key square footage, which is another custom field that I've set up on the property post type. And the compare operator should be greater than, and the type again is going to be numeric. And the value is going to be 5,000. So looking at this query, we should now be returning posts of the type property with a price that's less than $70,000, but with square footage that is bigger than 5,000. So let's go ahead and close this out and apply the query params. Now you can see that the posts being returned meet those parameters that we passed. And all we're doing is taking the way that WP Query works and applying that to the advanced query because that's all it is. It's just built right on top of WP Query and gives you a graphical user interface for interacting with that and building those queries. And as you can see here, if we scroll through all of the available parameters, there is a ton you can do with the advanced query option. But one more thing I wanna show you is how to use dynamic data within an advanced query. This is something we were really excited about when implementing this feature, because sometimes you want your query to not be so static and perhaps to be able to manipulate it outside of WordPress's normal behavior. So to use dynamic data in our query, what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify this query a bit. We're gonna get rid of the second meta key search and we're gonna work with just price. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna be able to pass in a price to filter by. We can do this using URL parameters. So to use a URL parameter via Oxygen's dynamic data function, I've set up a little helper function via code snippets. So let's jump over to code snippets and I'll show you. It's literally about three or four lines. All it is is a function that accepts a parameter. It checks if that parameter is set. And if it is, it returns that parameter. And these are URL parameters. So when you look up in the URL bar, you see question mark page equals edit dash snippet and ID equals six. Those are both URL parameters. So on this page, if we passed in ID as the parameter, this function will return six. So we can use that then to manipulate our query. So if we go in here and for our value, we choose data and go down to PHP function return value, we're gonna use that function that we've set up via code snippets, which was oxy fetch URL param. And then for the argument, we just need to pass in the name of the URL parameter that we wanna fetch the value of. So we're gonna say less than, and we're gonna insert that. Now we can close this out and we can save now let's jump up to the front end and see what happens. You can see that our query is returning nothing because the URL parameter it's looking for isn't there. But what we can do now is we can pass in our URL parameter. So let's add less than equals say $60,000. And now you can see it's using that URL parameter and it's pulling in only the properties that are worth less than $60,000. 
Now, the way you would probably use this is to have a dedicated page where you can provide links to that page with the URL parameters. So then on your site, say it's a real estate site, you could say view properties that are less than $60,000 and it will be a link to the page that has your easy posts or repeater element and the link would have this URL parameter already defined so you would never get a blank query returned. The other way we can use dynamic data is to create related post lists. So if we look at our presets here, we can take a look at how these are constructed. So we can grab related posts by terms, post by author of current post or archive. Let's jump into related posts by terms. It's gonna ask us which taxonomy we wanna use for our relationship. We're gonna click apply and then let's edit query. Now this isn't gonna work here because this is just a page. But if we were working on a template that applied to individual posts, we would be able to query other posts based on the advanced query we've set up here. So for post type, we're passing in a dynamic value of the current posts post type. So whatever post we view, this is going to get the post type of that post. So we're not hard coding anything. Again, this is something our dynamic data feature allows you to do that is pretty out of the ordinary and super powerful. And then we're doing something called a tax query. So this is querying posts by taxonomy. Again, a super powerful option, but relatively simple to set up. As you can see, we've chosen the array option here. It works a lot like the meta query that we were looking at in that you can have multiple tax queries with a relation parameter to determine the and or or relationship between the different taxonomy queries. But in this case, we're searching for posts with the same post type as the post we're currently viewing that have any of the categories that this post has. And the way we do that is we choose taxonomy category and then terms. And within terms, we're passing the current posts terms dynamically. And we're choosing the field slug to search by. And then the final piece of the magic here is we're going to the next parameter and choosing post not in, and we're passing in the ID of the current post. This ensures it doesn't return the current post. So this is just one of the many very powerful options available via Oxygen's advanced query feature. Again, if you wanna learn more about how to work with the advanced query, check out Bill Erickson's list and just read through it and see what all the options are that are available. Pretty much anything you can do with WP underscore query, you can do with Oxygen's advanced query. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's a little bit about how to use Oxygen's advanced query using knowledge of WP underscore query, as well as how to use some dynamic data in your queries via URL parameters. Thank you very much for watching.